We're about halfway through the Premier League season, meaning new players to the division are starting to settle. So now seems like a great time to assess the summer transfers and look at those who haven't set the Premier League alight since their move. Let's take a look at our worst Premier League signings of the season so far 11. In goal it's Joe Hart. An obvious choice in between the sticks, poor Joe Hart must be sick of his life these days, with the only man who still has confidence in the head and shoulders enthusiast being England boss Gareth Southgate. Hart was a wanted man over the summer with Guardiola still unwilling to play the goalkeeper and looked like West Ham had pulled off a real coup by getting the two-time Premier League winner. Sadly for Hart and West Ham, he's been a bit of a disaster for the Hammers, struggling to save a word document, let alone a shot. Sure, the defence in front of him hasn't been good enough, but Hart has to take some of the blame. At right back is Kuko Martina. Right, how on earth did Kuko Martina get another Premier League club over the summer? He was hardly spectacular at Southampton other than that ridiculous goal against Arsenal, yet Ronald Koeman still decided to bring the fullback in on a free, in what was maybe his final revenge against the Toffees. Whether he's at right back or left back, the 28 year old has been absolutely shocking and it's not fair to Everton fans that they have to pay to see him. Centre back is Alexander Dragovic. I bet you forgot this guy was even a Premier League player right now. The Austrian international signed for Leicester on loan on deadline day from Leverkusen and looked like a good bit of business. However, the bloke hasn't even played in the Premier League, so what was the point of bringing him in? Would he be any good if he played? Who knows? So maybe it's a bit harsh to include him in this team, but there weren't many options at centre-back, so just go easy on us, OK? He's alongside Jairo Riedeveld. I kind of feel sorry for Jairo Riedeveld. He was signed by Frank de Boer, who was looking to turn Crystal Palace into a ball-playing team, so Riedeveld looked like a good signing at the back, a young lad who's good in possession. However, the Eagles got off to a bad start, as did the defender, and then De Boer got the sack, and Roy Hodgson came in, and there's no way you can tell me Jairo Riedeveld is a Roy Hodgson kind of player. The youngster hasn't done well in the Premier League, but the environment that was in place for him to succeed in is gone, so what chance does he have now? At left back it's Javi Manquillo. Naturally a right back, the Spaniard has spent a lot of the season playing on the left side of defence, but no matter where he's been, he's run around like a lost puppy, which is not the kind of player you'd associate as a Rafa Benitez style defender. Constantly being out of position and switching off, Manquillo has been dreadful in black and white, and a lot of fans saw it coming, having seen him do exactly the same stuff the season before down the road at Sunderland. In midfield we've got Renato Sanchez. The most overhyped signing of the season without a doubt, Everyone expected the world when Renato Sanchez shockingly moved to Swansea on loan, but ever since his debut, he's not even looked good enough for a team battling relegation in the Premier League, which isn't great when you're on loan from one of the biggest clubs in the world, Bill as a future star. You'd consider a player like Sanchez to be great on the ball, but his passing has just been so bad, at one point he passed to an advertising board. Disaster. Also in the middle is Davy Klassen. The Dutch midfielder was an exciting arrival over the summer, costing Everton nearly £24 million from Ajax, where he'd scored tons of goals in the Eredivisie. However, that doesn't necessarily bring results in the Premier League, and that's been the case so far for Davy Klassen, who's not even been a consistent figure during Everton's rough start of the season. For his sake, hopefully the midfielder can turn it around in 2018, but for the first half of the season, Davy Klassen has been a massive flop. Next we've got Marko Arnautovic. The second West Ham player in this team, it initially looked like the Hammers had done good business over the summer, but the arrival of Mark Arnautovic for a club record fee of £20 million always looked like a big risk. The Austrian had been temperamental during his career, but did well at Stoke. Sadly for West Ham fans though, they've seen the bad of Mark Arnautovic since he arrived, going missing in games, providing no attacking impetus, and also serving suspensions for silly elbows. Next up it's Sandro Ramirez. The Spaniard is having to play out wide in this team, and while it's not his favourite position, the poor bloke can't get a game anywhere, so he'll just have to deal with it. Yet another Everton signing, Sandro Ramirez was billed as one of the bargains of the season at £5.2 million from Malaga. But during a time in the season where Everton was shy of a goal scorer, Sandro Ramirez was nowhere to be seen, so where has it all gone wrong for the Spaniard? Everton fans, let us know in the comments. Up front we've got Hosselu. Newcastle United needed a marquee striker in the summer, but instead they got Hosselu for £5 million. Sure the former Stoke man has his talents, but in terms of scoring goals, it's clearly just not for him, with Hosselu missing a boatload of goals and chances in black and white, much to the anger of supporters, who aren't really spoiled for choice when it comes to strikers nowadays. Premier League survival is what it's all about at St James's Park this season, but that could be a tough task if Hosselu remains the main forward. 
And finally, we've got Wilfried Bonny. The Ivory Coast forward was the man of the hour during his first spell with Swansea, averaging a goal every other game during a season and a half in Wales, which is why Man City shelled out an initial £25 million for him in 2015. Since then, Bonny has been a shell of his former self, struggling at a much bigger club, then failing to make any impact while on loan at Stoke. This summer, he made his grand return to Swansea, with his former employers desperate after losing key players during the summer. Sadly, the nostalgia signing of Bonnie has done nothing to save the Swans, and the second coming for Swansea's number two has been the worst comeback to us since Steps. So that's our worst Premier League signings of the season so far, 11. Let us know your team in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.